Hey guys, Chill here. Welcome back to 3D Fundamentals Tutorial 8. Today we are going to reorganize our code into a kind of assembly line or a pipeline. Uh, and this pipeline is going to be upgraded in the coming episodes to more and more mimic the programmable shader pipeline of real graphics hardware. Now to better help you understand the reason for the pipeline and its history, I was going to start this video off with a little short history lesson on 3D graphics hardware on the PC. But after doing some research, I decided that the story was so interesting, it really deserves its own video. So you can check the wiki page for a link to that video. I'm going to do one or two videos on the history of 3D graphics on the PC. Now, if you look at our code for draw triangle, uh, we've got a bunch of different functions here, and there is a lot of redundancy. A lot of the code in these three function families, really, is redundant. Like, look at draw flat triangle text wrap. So we got the flat top and bottom parts, and then here is the common part that we factored out. Uh, and all this stuff is going to be basically the same as in the non-wrapping functions here. All these parts are all identical between them. The only difference is the parts inside here. That's a lot of redundancy, right? Imagine, think about modern games, how many different effects and effect combinations you've got. And if you had to write a separate function family for each one of those, you're going to have like thousands of functions for all this shit. It's terrible. Now, we could for this, uh, for this draw triangle text wrap and draw triangle text, what we could do is just in this part here, we could put an if if statement and we could pass in a uh, bool to say whether it's wrapping or not and then it would just do different behavior depending on whether or not it is a wrapping operation and that would be fine but again imagine all the possible different shader effects you can achieve uh, and if you had to control each one of those different effects with a different switch with a different control you'd be have a crazy huge amount of state you'd have to manage it's insane and this is the problem that engineers faced in the late 90s with you know PC consumer grade graphics hardware we're getting many more effects added and different uh, different texture modes and all these settings were just piling up and it was making programming for graphics a nightmare and the solution was to make the GPU run some custom programs instead of hard coding all the effects and just controlling them with switches and state variables so enabling the GPU to run custom programs gave programmers more freedom for creativity and made it more manageable. So what we're going to do is we are going to start off with a fixed function pipeline. Everything is fixed. There is no configuration, no shaders you can drop in, just like they had in the 90s. And then we are going to start replacing parts of this pipeline with configurable shader units that you can uh, plug in and configure the behavior of the entire pipeline. But that's for future videos. Right now, let's talk about the fixed function pipeline that we're going to be creating today. So we start off with the index triangle list, and uh, you guys are very familiar with this. It has a vector of indices, has a vector of vertices. What you're going to do is you are going to split those up into the index stream and the vertex stream. Uh, the index stream is going to bypass the next stage, which is the vertex transformer. And what the vertex transformer does is it just rotates and moves the vertices of our model in, in world space or whatever you want to call it. So it does that transformation uh, and it'll output a, another vertex stream. And the vertex stream and the index stream are now used in the triangle assembler and that is how you get out individual triangles. So the index will select three vertices from the vertex stream and that will be used to create a triangle and that will be done as long as there are indices remaining. So the triangle assembler will take the vertex stream and the index stream and it will pop out a whole bunch of triangles. Each one of those triangles will be sent to the perspective screen transformer and what this guy's job is to do is do the perspective divide on each of those triangles on each of the vertices of those triangles and also do the screen transform and once those the triangles of the or the uh, vertices of the triangle are processed 
that triangle is then sent on to the triangle rasterizer, scans over the triangle in raster space, it will interpolate those texture coordinates, and for every pixel in raster space, it uses the interpolated texture coordinates to do a lookup, and it spits out those colors to put pixel, which puts them on the screen. Now one more thing I should note is the triangle assembler here is also where we do back face culling. Triangles here are culled and culled triangles are not passed on to the pube space transformer. And so that means that we don't need our flag anymore because those triangles just aren't passed on at all. So the flag, the cull flag is no longer going to be needed. All right, now let's take a look at the code. I basically did it in two commits uh, here. The first one was very simple. I just removed the culling flags from the triangle list, index triangle list. So here you see cull flags is gone and it's, that stuff is gone from here. Very simple commit. Now the second commit I added here, that's where all the real work is being done. There's a whole shit ton of changes I made in this single commit. So, I mean, where, where do we even start? Well, let's start at, I guess, pipeline. Because pipeline is the thing that's added. Well. If we look at graphics.h, you can see here that we've deleted all of draw triangle functions here because they're going to be replaced with the pipeline. So let's look at the pipeline and see what it had, what we have here. Just a header file, no CPP file. Let me just collapse these guys their definitions here. Okay, so this is a little more manageable. The pipeline. Let's look at the draw function. It's the most important part. It's going to take an index triangle list. And the vertex is specified up here. This is the vertex type uh, used throughout the pipeline. You know, it overloads all the important operators that you're going to need for interpolating and managing the vertex type. And it has just a position and a texture coordinate. So you draw function takes the index triangle list, and all it does is it calls process vertices with the uh, the vertices and the indices. So this is basically the split, where we split index triangle list into vertices and indices. So process vertices, what is this? Well, this is going to be our vertex transformer here. That's process vertices. So we're placing all of those blocks in the uh, in the pipeline diagram there with just function calls. So this one function calls another function, passes on, calls the other function, and that is how our pipeline is going to work through functions. Uh, so in process vertices, we create a vector of vertices for the output vertices. We transform the input vertices by, you know, going through each vertex, applying the rotation matrix, applying a translation uh, vector, and creating a new vertex based on the transform position plus the uh, texture coordinate, which isn't touched, it's just passed right through, right? Uh, so we create a new vector, transform vertex positions, and push into that vector, and then we send that vector out to the next stage, which is assemble triangles. That's just our triangle assembly. Now what assemble triangles does is it is going to use the, uh, the indexes to index into the vertices. So by the order of the indexes, you're going to get one, two, three vertices, and that is going to give you a triangle. Uh, so we just use those to index into the vertices. We create some references here to make our life easier. We do the back face culling calculation with the, uh, the cross product here. And if it passes the back face culling, then we call process triangle with these three vertices and it will copy those vertices to this function here. Now all that process triangle does is it takes these three vertices here and it creates a triangle object out of them. Uh, triangle was added, there's nothing special to it, it is literally just a class with three vertices. It's not really necessary to do this, but I just like to group them together like that. Now you see this process triangle function, it doesn't really have uh, anything in this diagram. It doesn't have any analog in here. And the reason is, is because this is actually going to be added later. This is where the geometry shader is going to be. Uh, if you look here, I, I left in a comment here by accident using GS, geometry shader. So this is where the geometry shading is going to happen. But right now it doesn't do anything. It just takes these three vertices, lumps them together into a triangle object and passes that on into post-process vertices. 
Post process vertices, all it does is it calls pube screen transformer dot transform on the positions of the three vertices of the triangle. And that's it. Just transforms the three positions and then pushes that on over to draw a triangle. Draw a triangle is, you know, just our basic draw a triangle function we had before. We got our vertices, we determine, you know, we sort them, we determine flat top, flat bottom, we create the splitting vertex, and then we draw our two triangles, flat top and flat bottom. Next, you got your draw flat top, draw flat bottom. That does the stuff that is specific to the top and bottom cases, and they both call draw flat triangle, which does the stuff that is common to both cases. It's the same stuff that I told you in the previous tutorials, there's no need to go over this stuff again. One major difference that we have here is before, when we get to the inner loop here, before we were only interpolating the texture coordinate, but for this uh, pipeline we actually interpolate the whole vertex, so the x the Y, the Z coordinates, everything is interpolated here. And that is because in the future, those things will also be needed for our shaders. So instead of splitting it off and making our life very difficult, we just interpolate everything uh, in the inner loop as well. By the way, just to draw your attention here, I've added a lot of comments to this so you can uh, review it yourself. And you can see here, I, I'm seeing basically the same thing right here. There's some waste for interpolating X, Y, Z, but it makes our life easier and Z is going to be needed in the future anyways. So yeah, we interpolate and here we perform the texture lookup, we clamp and we write the pixel right here. And that, my friends, is the basic uh, fixed function pipeline uh, it stores a reference to the graphics, it stores a pube screen transformer, it has matrix 3 and vec 3 for rotation and translation, and it also stores a unique pointer to the texture that is used for rendering. And just some extra functions here, let me see if I can find them. Uh, so besides draw, you've got the constructor that just uh, binds the reference to graphics. Uh, you got some setters here, bind rotation and bind translation, and they just allow you to set your rotation matrix and your translation vector. And you got bind texture here, which allows you to set your texture or load a texture from file name. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the pipeline. Now you're going to notice a whole bunch of other changes here. Uh, a lot of stuff had to get removed because with this pipeline, a lot of the old um, a lot of the old demos, they wouldn't work anymore, so they had to be cleaned out. And also I'm changing the way that the models work, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Let's just go up the list. So X quad, X mutual scene. So all these scenes and all of these uh, models, they all just got deleted basically. Text vertex isn't needed anymore because we're just using the vertex that's defined in the pipeline. Uh, what did I change in VEC3? Alright, so I removed the interpolate2 function from VEC3 and VEC2. And what I replaced that with is, I believe, in Chili Math, if I'm not mistaken, I just added a general free interpolate function that will interpolate uh, between two things. And it could be vectors, it could be just uh, scalars. Anything that would support these operations, it will interpolate them. Uh, so I added that interpolate function, and that is used throughout the pipeline instead of interpolate2. Uh, what else? Obviously I added triangle. I already mentioned this guy, just a simple, basically just a struct is what it is. Uh, templated on vertex type. Uh, what did I change in scene? Alright, so scene doesn't take uh, graphics anymore, and that makes sense because it, it the pipeline stores a reference to graphics. And uh, scene is also not const anymore because the pipeline drawing functions, they aren't allowed to be const. They might change some things while they're drawing. So I unconsted the draw from scene, but otherwise it remains the same. Graphics.h removed all of those, uh, all those draw functions from there and from graphics.cpp. Uh, cube skin scene cube. So cube changed quite a bit. And I've removed a whole bunch of, I believe I removed a bunch of shit from it actually. So before models, what they would do is they would store the vertices and they would store the texture coordinates. And then you could get triangles which would generate a triangle list from these guys. 
But instead of doing that, I basically just made cube a wrapper around some static functions. So now you have cube get skinned and it just uh, returns the vertices, it just returns a uh, triangle list like that. It doesn't maintain, look here, there's no data, so it does no longer maintains those vectors. It just creates the, uh, the vertices and the texture coordinates on the fly when you call this static function. It's templated on vector type, um, because in the future we're going to have different types of vectors. But yeah, so get, get skinned, we'll get one that is uh, skinned. And what I mean by skin is, you know, it matches up to one of these textures here. Uh, so, and that's the only function right now is just get skinned. But later on, other ones will be added for other kinds of uh, index triangle lists with other kinds of vertices. So, old folded cube scene became cube skin scene, scene and it changed, you know, accordingly. Because all this stuff now, all of this bullshit, this translation, uh, the assembling of the triangles, the culling, that's all handled by the pipeline. So now all it does, let's just get rid of this here. All it's going to do is it's going to build the translation uh, and rotation and it's going to bind them and then it's going to call draw on the pipeline. And that's all it does. And this stuff, the keyboard input is the same. And the constructor just binds a texture to the pipeline. And there you go. So obviously, the uh, the scene, the scenes are becoming a lot smaller because you know they don't have to deal with all this bullshit. This is all handled by the the pipeline. Uh, and the data um, pube skin transformers needed anymore. All you need is the uh, the triangle list, the pipeline object, and then the stuff needed for the translation and the rotation. And there you have it. That is the fixed pipeline. This is the starting point from where we're going to build our, uh, our real 3D engine with shaders. And I really encourage you to go over it and look over the code yourself. I've added, as you can see here, I've added a lot of um, comments to this stuff to make it easier to read. And I'm going to add comments uh, going forward for all the shaders and all the different changes we're going to make. But yeah, I encourage you to review this code, get an idea of the uh, of the pipeline here, of the assembly line that we've got going, because uh, that'll make it easier to understand the ideas that I introduce going forward. Now that I've laid down this uh, groundwork, the next videos are going to be very interesting. I promise you. The uh, we're going next video we're going to do a pixel shader, and so we'll, we'll we'll create our first shader. We'll see how the shader works, how we're going to fit a shader into this pipeline. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Until then, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you like the video. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to see me make more of these 3D videos, please click the like button. It helps a lot. Leave a comment. And uh, I will see you soon with some more 3D fundamentals.